This video is brought to you by Linode. Get a free $20 credit by using the offer code LinuxGamer19 at checkout. Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite unthemable curly head, Gardner, the Linux Gamer. This video would not be possible if it weren't for the support of my 150 amazing patrons. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. I want to give a special shout out to Kristoff, one of my top tier Singularity members. My dude, your support is truly humbling. So today, we're talking about Jellyfin. Now, as you might know, I have been on a quest for quite a while <laughs> uh, to self-host as much as I possibly can. I have been uh, looking for alternatives to uh, cloud-based software, uh, software that you don't own, that you can't control, and you have no um, means of recourse when uh, companies steal your information. It's to the point where I have thought about actually getting a landline uh, from, a, from a phone provider that I trust, setting up a VOIP bridge for my phone to my home, and putting a, a 56K modem in my, uh, in my server, connecting it to the landline, and doing like voice calls that way. Uh, I just don't trust Verizon or, and, or any of the other provider, like cell providers. Like They all seem awful. Just terrible. <laughs> But yeah, a lot of the uh, the phone providers actually still charge long distance, so I don't know if that's going to happen. But what I feel is more reasonable than trying to set up all of that rigmarole is, uh, and it scratches both my collector's itch and my need to self-host things, is setting up a media server. See, I have this growing collection of Blu-rays and a massive collection of DVDs. I, I, if you can't tell... I love science fiction. Science fiction is like one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. Uh, if it involves space um, or space cowboys, oh my God, I'm so into it. I really like movies and TV shows, uh, comedies and, and, and uh, science fiction and, and uh, all that stuff. It's really cool. Uh, I've always wanted to have a media server of my own. And for the last year, I've actually had one. And for a while, my, my server has been running Plex. But Plex has issues, a few issues that I really don't uh, don't care for. <laughs> uh, one of the things is that uh, it's closed source. Uh, closed source software, I just don't trust by by the nature of the, the fact that the code's proprietary and there are only a small number of people who actually get to see the code. That kind of irritates the crap out of me. Um, the other problem is that Plex uses centralized metrics. Uh, they gather metrics data about your system and what you're watching and all that stuff. And uh, I didn't know that when I first started using it, and now I know. And I've been looking for an alternative. I didn't know that there was one that met my needs until I found Jellyfin. Um, Jellyfin, according to their website, this is, this, this is their words, Jellyfin is the free software media system that puts you in control of managing and streaming your media. There are no strings attached, no premium licenses or features, and no hidden agendas. Shots fired, right? <laughs> Jellyfin is awesome. I really like it. Uh, I'm going to compare my experience with Jellyfin to my experience with Plex, since Plex is really the de facto standard uh, when it comes to actually, you know, setting up media servers. Now, I, I wouldn't be me if I didn't talk about the aesthetics of the application. Uh, from a per purely stylistic standpoint, Jellyfin is leaps and bounds better than Plex. The color choices here are so much more pleasing. They are so much more pleasing. Where Plex has like this turd and orange color scheme, Jellyfin has like a blue and purple one by default. And you can customize that, which, you know what, that's not my thing, but it's probably your thing. And I think that right out of the gate, that is a huge leg up over Plex. In Jellyfin, you can actually customize a whole lot of things, a, a whole lot more than you can actually customize in Plex. So let's talk about the web UI. Um, the web interface looks good. It's pretty good to use. Um, there are multiple high quality styles that you can apply and also a Windows media style, but we won't get into that. You can even write and apply your own custom CSS and it's officially supported. Um, that's, that's fantastic. That is just Oh, that's so nice. I would, I actually might consider doing that. Uh, when, when it comes to CSS, I kind of geek out about CSS. I love CSS. The landing page is quite accessible. Uh, it's quite customizable. Uh, you can change what categories actually appear on your home screen. Um, but I wish that I had a little bit more uh, of control here. There are just a few little nitpicks I have with that, and we'll get to that in a minute. 
Jellyfin also has the ability to uh, enable hardware encoding uh, via multiple different hardware encoders. For example, uh, NVENC. Now, I had issues with some of the files that I've ripped with N uh, NVENC. I'm not sure why. Some videos would play, some others wouldn't. Uh, so I just went back to the standard, which it uses the CPU to, to re-encode stuff. But I really like the fact that that's there, and I'm hoping that I can like update my drivers or something and have that just work. That would be really sweet. It also has excellent user management, um, and it, Jellyfin also has the ability to write and use plugins. Uh, plugins are pretty cool. There's an IPTV plugin. Um, there's a few others. Uh, one of the things that I would really like to try, and I don't have the hardware for it, or even the signal for it, is uh, f over the air TV. Um, you can actually set up over the air TV if you have the, the right kind of capture card in your server. Uh, that is something that I would be really interested in trying, uh, but I live in a place where there really isn't over the air TV signals. So um, that's something that I'll have to do at some other point in my life, but I'd really like to get my hands on that. In fact, that's something I'd like to try on Plex as well. Now, while the color scheme might be nicer, um, the UI can be a tad bit confusing. I mean, it's serviceable if you know if you want to get to your media and that's all you want to do, then that's that you can do that. Um, but things just don't behave the way I would expect them to behave. For example, there are three different ways in the web interface to get to the same area into the same settings panel, and it's like. Why are there three? It's not even like crucial for you to get into this area. And yet there's one up here in the right corner. There's one up here in the hamburger menu. And yeah, it's called a hamburger menu. If you disagree with me, fight me. Uh, <laughs> and there's also another way in the settings, if you get into the settings. And it's like, why is this dashboard being emphasized so much when it's not really that necessary to get into in the first place? Similarly, when you click on uh, a, you know, up next thing, it'll take you to an episode of a TV show where I would prefer that it would take you to the series and uh, show you, like give you an option, like default you to the play button for the next episode. That's just my personal uh, opinion. I think that that would be nicer. And I'm coming from Plex. Uh, so using Plex, I feel is just a little bit more intuitive and maybe Plex has spoiled me uh, in, in some regard. So on, in Plex, the libraries are, at least in the web UI, are on the left and you can always get to them very simply, where in Jellyfin, your libraries are displayed at the top of the landing page uh, with little distinction between them and uh, playable media, which I find obnoxious. And you can also get to your libraries from the uh, hamburger menu, hamburger menu, um, the, it requires it to slide out and it's just weird. I kind of wish that that pane, the, the menu was always pinned on the left side of the screen. That's just my personal, uh, wish. Also, they seem to be going for a tight visual experience, yet there are a few little problems that I have with the web UI. The biggest one that I find is HTML input tags are not styled to actually match, uh, their, app they're just normal unstyled input tags and uh, that it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb to me and i find it a bit irritating um the other thing is like if you look through plex's um settings panel and you you're trying to find something plex's settings are generally pretty clean and and make sense that, that you can tell that they've put time into organizing their settings panel and uh, I don't want to talk too much trash about Jellyfin because I really like the app, but but the settings panel in particular I find to be obnoxious. In many instances, uh, settings are literally just a, a, a list, a high, like from top to bottom. You know, you have a label and then you have a select uh, or some kind of input, and then you have a label and some kind of input, and a label and some kind of input. And sometimes there's helper text and sometimes there isn't, and it's like. You know, the, the way that, that the dashboard itself is laid out, that makes it, it makes sense because like you have things organized by different categories and then you have in general, for example, just it's just a list of things. And it's like uh, there should be a little bit more thought put into it. And I understand why this happens. This happens a lot when I'm doing development, too. But like, again, this is these are just small problems that I have that I would like to see addressed. So, the, so I wanted to talk about the Android app because I have the app installed on my phone. And the thing is, it feels like a progressive web app. And you know what? That's awesome. I 
really think that progressive web apps are the future. I think that progressive web apps are how most um, apps should be developed <laughs> because you can do a lot. There are very few things that you can't do with a progressive web app unless you need some kind of like actual low level reason for having uh, an app you can do most of the stuff you need to do with a progressive web app javascript is robust web assembly is coming uh styling is on point and you can uh really quickly and easily do everything that you need with a progressive web app and it saves you a ton of time from having to develop specific versions for android and ios progressive web apps are the best so kudos to them for doing that or at least that's what it seems like it is uh for the jellyfin android app i'm really excited about that there is one thing that i have found with the android app and maybe this is a good thing but it doesn't seem to carry over a lot of the customizations uh that you set up for your account on the desktop version uh namely it doesn't have the same theme that the desktop version has Again, that might be a good thing uh, if you don't want to have the same look and feel on different devices. Okay, that's fine, but uh, that's just my take. So I wanted to talk about the Android TV version of the app because it, this actually feels like an, an app to me rather than a PWA. Um, I like the fact that it's FOSS. I like that. That's really cool. It works great, but it does suffer from some of the same confusing uh layout problems that the web interface has also the playback ui feels a little bit cluttered uh there's a lot of extraneous information going on around the 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 periphery of the screen and to be honest i find that distracting uh rather than helpful especially on, a, on an nvidia shield when you don't really have a play button and so you have to just kind of hit the the center button on the on the remote it's it's a little bit strange but again I, I understand you know that this is still kind of a work in progress i mean this is pretty new this the the uh, android tv app is pretty new i don't want to knock it too much and don't get me wrong i for all the criticism i have laid out in this video about jellyfin it comes from a place of love because dude to be honest jellyfin is literally uh just one or two tiny steps away from beating plex in every category for me um it beats it on the style front um the experience you know the the latest version of plex on android tv is is a step backwards it's a regression in my opinion and all jellyfin needs to do is is beat them in that category the one place where jellyfin really falls down for me is metadata collection finding and organizing my content is just it doesn't do it right sometimes so i had an exceptionally difficult time um with several tv shows uh the first show i ever ripped was battlestar galactica uh it was the first show that i ever ripped and i didn't uh, apply the correct naming convention to the shows i ended up separating out the episodes into uh directories so i had uh, Battlestar Galactica slash season one slash o one dash miniseries dot mkv uh jellyfin did not like that jellyfin wanted things named s01 e01 miniseries or whatever and so because of that jellyfin had a really hard time uh actually applying the correct metadata to each of these episodes uh, i've had similar things happen with other tv shows uh and i find it incredibly annoying that's really the major issue that i have with jellyfin at the moment i had to go in and write a regular expression to uh, rename all of the episodes of these shows uh, in order to actually have Jellyfin find the correct metadata. And even still, I've had some issues with episodes not being correctly organized uh, or recognized. But aside from the metadata and some of the small, uh, confusing UI issues that I found, uh, Jellyfin is really, in my opinion, the best option. Uh, it's not available on a lot of platforms. Like right now, you can only get an Android app, and if you have a web browser, you can use the web UI. Um, but with all that said, it still works well. And it's it, it, I feel like it works just as well in most instances as Plex, and it's open source, which Plex is not. <laughs>
So I have been slowly migrating from Plex to Jellyfin. I really like Jellyfin in just about every way. And uh, I recommend that you try it out. Now, if you wanna try it out, set up a Linode instance and give it a spin. Uh, you can get a free $20 credit using the offer code LinuxGamer19 at checkout. There's also a link in the description that'll get you there. Linode is committed to making cloud computing accessible to everyone. They provide the tools needed to do whatever you want with your server. Linode offers many of the top Linux distributions that you can install in one of their 10 worldwide data centers, with a new one opening up in Sydney at the end of 2019. Linode offers block storage options and dynamic resizing so that you can easily and affordably scale up your own Jellyfin instance should you ever need more space. Whether you're a Linux junkie or just starting to tinker with code, you can use Linode. It's DIY if you like to do everything yourself, but if you want easy, there are plenty of one-click apps to deploy Minecraft and CSGO servers, WordPress, and so much more. I am a huge fan of Linode. I have been using them since before they were even sponsoring this channel, and I can't recommend them enough. If you want to help support this show, you can head over to uh, Linode and use the offer code LinuxGamer19. There's a link in the description. They're awesome. Thank you to Linode for supporting this show. Well, my friends, I want to know what you think about Jellyfin. Have you tried it out? Are you a big fan or do you think that it needs a little bit more work? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you have to say. But I think that's going to do it for now, guys. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon. There's also uh, LibrePay, which is a free and open source alternative. Uh, but no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, The Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.